Hello everybody, this is Lexi Griggs at Barb High School. I wanted to make a quick video showing you how I make drag and drop activities in PowerPoint for my classroom. These instructions have been adapted from a video I watched by Katie Bell showing how to create a drag and drop activity in Google Slides. My district where I teach is a Microsoft 365 district, so I wanted to adapt those instructions so that teachers in my district can follow them and create these activities for themselves. I've gone ahead and created a new PowerPoint with my instructions typed out, the basic skeleton of the activity already input. It's just pictures and shapes. It's a rounded rectangle shape if you're wondering. And instead of drawing four of these, I just made one and then copied and pasted it, made, made it easier for myself. Same thing with the text boxes. I typed it out once, copied and pasted, so they were all the same size and format. You don't want your students to be able to edit your instructions. So you have to go about this in a bit of a roundabout way. Uh, Microsoft is working on a feature to be able to lock photos in text boxes. However, it's not released yet. So we've got to do this a bit of, a bit of the difficult way. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Shapes and go, choose a rectangle, because I don't want my background to be white, that'd be boring. And I'm going to draw my rectangle to completely cover the slide. I'm going to right click the shape and choose format shape. And I want to choose picture or texture fill. And it's already put my picture for me, but all I did was type in notebook paper. I selected my image and clicked insert. Now I wanna send it to the back. So making sure I'm on the format tab, I'm going to go to where it says send backward and click the little drop box and go to send to back. I need to do a bit of minor formatting. Selected both of my text boxes and I'm dragging them to where they're both on the right side of the margin. Now, notice I can still click on these items and edit text and drag and move things around. I don't want my students to be able to do that. So I'm going to press the Control and A buttons to select everything on the slide. I'm going to right click and choose Save as Picture. This one I'm going to call instructions background. I'm going to create a new slide and change the layout to blank. Go to design, format background, picture or texture fill. Instead of going to online this time, we're going to choose file. Select the picture we just made and choose insert. Notice I can click on this slide and nothing can be selected. That's exactly how we want it. I'm gonna leave this here just in case. Whenever I'm done with the creation part of this activity, I'll delete it. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the actual activity portion of the presentation. However, when I go to save this slide as an image, it's going to save it as a PNG file, and it's going to make the background transparent. Um, I do want some sort of background for this slide, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go to Insert, Shape, choose the rectangle, cover my entire slide, change the fill, I think that a soft gray is a lot more pleasant to look at than a stark white. And then I'm going to send it to the back the same as before. I'm going to press the Control and A buttons at the same time to select everything on the slide. I'm going to right click, choose Save, Pic save as Picture, and I'm going to save this one as Task Background.
Next, I'm going to create a new slide again. I'm going to go to blank. Then change the background again. We just went to design, format, background, picture or texture fill. We chose file. And we're changing the background to the image we just created. The last thing you need to do to complete this assignment is to move your text boxes. I just drew a box over by clicking and dragging. I'm going to press Control X to cut and Control V to paste. Now, the only thing on this slide that it's able to be moved are the text boxes. I'm going to go ahead and do the activity part so you can see how it would work. If you are having your students label anything, um, whether it's a map or a diagram, I would highly recommend inserting a dot before each of your words or phrases. You just do that by going to insert symbol and then locating the bullet shape and choosing insert. I like to put a space after each one. Then from there, all you need to do is select your space and your circle, press Control C to copy, and then paste it on each one. This is going to make it easier for the students to know where they're placing each item, and it's gonna make it easier for you to grade items as well, especially things that are kind of finicky like maps or scientific diagrams. The last thing I need to do is go back and delete my old slides with my movable objects. I'm just going to delete and delete, and I'm going to delete my blank slide. I'm going to move these back to the center so that the, the task isn't complete. Then after that, I just hit save and then it's ready to go onto Blackboard or in OneNote or wherever you choose to put your activities. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, it's lexi.griggs at cpsb.org and I will be happy to help you out. I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks for watching.